coming up on Sports Night. Cats fans cried purple tears after last night's nail biter, but do they still have a chance to dance? The Lax Gals got out of a log jam in overtime on the road. We check in with them before their home open. And what's the difference between racquetball and squash? Find out when we go clubbing with Harry Swartow on Sports Night right now. Welcome to the show. I'm in Guzzi Acalado alongside Neto Lee Lax. Now, Netta, Cats fans probably suffered a sleepless night after last night's heartbreaker. Well, I know I certainly did, but while Ryan Arena certainly was not sleeping during the game last night when the Northwestern Wildcats took on the 11th ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. It was senior night at Welsh Ryan and of course John Sherna, the senior who became Northwestern's all-time leading scorer was honored as well. And moving on to the game itself, early on the Buckeyes dominated. You can see here Jared Sullinger to Linzel Smith underneath and the and one. But Northwestern would fight back, fueled mostly by Drew Crawford, which we see here driving to the basket. He would really do it all last night. Coming up, we can see him running the give and go with John Sherna to perfection and hitting it from outside from the three. On the other end of the floor, the Cats had no answer though for Jared Sullinger. He just did it all. The sophomore had 22 points, three assists, 18 rebounds and two blocks on the night and just really fueled the Buckeyes to take over Northwestern's game. You can see him here with the assist getting it down low and just doing it all for that team. The end of the game and you clawed its way back to, back to the top off with Alex Marcatulio's big three-pointer to tie the game as we can see here. He hits it, the crowd goes wild but it wasn't over yet. Ohio State would come back and get it into Sullinger down low for the layup and win the game. Cats fans probably didn't want to see that one again, but it happened. So Ohio State won 75 to 73. Northwestern played extremely well in the second half, but it wasn't enough. Jared Sullinger scored 22 points and 18 rebounds, while the Cats had just 16 boards as an entire team. Drew Crawford led the Cats with 23 points on nine of 11 shooting, and John Sherna sh chipped in with just 22. A tough contain, loss to Western uh, yesterday, but they played. Craft on the way up, but we didn't do a good enough job, and he sped up the court, and, um, you know, he, he got going a little too quickly, so. It's very tough. Um, it's, it's just one of, those, one of those things. Every every close loss is tough, especially when you have a chance to win it down the stretch. Um, but, I mean, we, we played great down towards the end of the game, and, and we're all real proud of our team. And um, one thing that's great about us is I think we're a resilient bunch, and so we're going to be ready to go on Saturday. A tough loss for Northwest, Northwestern yesterday, but they played in a big game in State College last Saturday. And Guzzi, you want to tell us a little more about that? Sure, and in close games this year, the Cats haven't exactly had the best track, track record, but let's get to the highlights. Pre-game warm-up, Tim Frazier getting hot, and they get hot inside the paint. Watch the one-handed slam. The Cats couldn't stop anyone in the paint. Look at this, Travis gets the board, boop, puts it back in. Travis again with the slam. So how would Northwestern answer back? I'll tell you with the three ball. There's Marcatulia from the corner. Sherna up top. And now Drew Crawford dipping his toes in the three point land. The Cats were loving the long ball. And now tied 63-63, three minutes left. Sherna gets the friendly bounce. But Frazier doing what he does best, driving into the lane. That one was tough, but he gets the bucket and one foul shot was good. So now with 14 seconds left, Penn State gets fouled again. Graham is fouled, and now he has two at the line. Let's see, can he make them? Misses both of them, so the Cats have a chance to come back. They push it down the court. They look to get it inside. John Sherna chucks up a shot, and he's fouled. Two seconds left, he has two at the line. Sinks the first one calmly, and he sinks the next one. So now Penn State, one last chance. Throw up the Hail Mary shot. No good. The Cats escape 67-66. And while good old Johnny clinched the must win for the Cats, he also swatted a career-high five block shots. He faced the team with 23 points. Penn State's scoring stud Tim Frazier also pocketed 23 points for the Nittany Lions and dished out eight assists. But the three bomb was the word for NU in the game. 
Northwestern was 15 of 29 from three-point land and only connected on 7 of 21 shooting from inside the arc. And after splitting on the road and at home, Northwestern's dancing hopes are on the line in the last regular season game against Iowa. And this game tips off at 1.30 p.m. And for those of you participating in Dance Marathon, you have one of two options. Set your DVRs or see if the tent TVs can conveniently be set to the Big Ten Network. Tonight is the first time that Sports Night has had an all-female anchor desk. And just as women have taken strides to get access into locker rooms, there have also been many changes that landed them on the field. This June will mark the 40th anniversary of the passing of Title IX. The landmark legislation is often credited with breaking the glass ceiling for women in athletics. The bill heavily affected the way that college athletic departments approached the notion of female teams. And Northwestern is certainly no exception. By far the most successful team at NU, the women's lax team, is a byproduct of Title IX. So I was curious, why is there no men's counterpart trying to mimic that success? Arrogance, intensity, dominance. Having made seven consecutive trips to the national championships and winning six of those titles in its short 10-year history, it comes as no surprise that these attributes are embodied by the Northwestern women's lacrosse team. Despite being the most successful athletic team in NU's history, a men's varsity lacrosse team has yet to be formed. I probably welcome it with open arms. Sometimes we watch like the club lacrosse team here and you know whenever we see like another men's lacrosse team or another school it's like ooh like men's lacrosse haven't seen this in a while but at the same time you know I do like being you know the um, only I guess like gender in this sport and kind of being like the dominant um, sport in that and it's, you know it's pretty exciting not many schools can say that you know they're the only sport it's not you know men's and women's it's just women's. With the 40th anniversary of Title IX approaching in June it's hard to ignore the role that legislation has played in the LAX team's history. I mean, from where I was, you know, as a youth to where sports are now for females, it's just night and day. And, um, you know, a lot of that is due to just providing opportunities. And I think our program is a perfect example of being added um, for those reasons. And given the opportunity, look at the success we've had. I think Title IX has kind of helped um, lacrosse as a whole because it's usually the sport where okay if we want to add another men's sport um, then we're most likely going to have to add another female sport and that's going to be lacrosse. With Title IX it's really difficult to add a new men's varsity sport without adding a women's and we already have a lacrosse team. Ty Thomas is the president of the men's club lacrosse team at Northwestern and he acknowledges that Title IX is not really what's stopping NU from having a men's varsity team. Um, the ultimate question is funding. Everyone's challenged for resources, whether it's on-campus people or athletics, whoever it is. So I think that the more sports that you add, uh, the less resources each sport has. And I think that our current athletic director is really about supporting the sports that we do have and putting them in a position to all be successful. While Thomas acknowledges that hope for a varsity team is bleak, he also hopes that the club team can garner more support from the women's team and from the school. As far as support from the women's team, we don't get any. The coach really doesn't like us. Not doesn't like it, us, but thinks we're below her and them, so they don't really share field space. It sucks. Yeah, we, we play on their field, but whenever they like three of their players want to go out and practice shooting, we have to like, all right, it's your field, even though there's three of you. So it wasn't built for us, but we play on it. On three. Natalie Lax, NNN Sports. Last night, the women's team continued their success when they took on ninth-ranked Syracuse and beat them in overtime with a final score of 11-9. To, to top off their success, they, their undefeated 3-0 record, junior Taylor Thornton received ALC Defensive Player of the Week this week. And coming up after the break, more basketball, but we switch to the women's team and their senior day. And basketball annual, analyst Justin Shecker will join us for some insight into the cast. Stay tuned.
antes de tratar. Solo tú. No juegues con fósforos, no juegues con fuego. Fuego. No hay nada perturbable con el asusta a un pobre ratón sin casa en que vivir. Si un hermoso bosque es lo que deseas, no juegues con fósforos, no juegues con fuego. Solo tú puedes prevenir los fuegos en áreas naturales. Fuego. I'm a single mother of two kids. I work a lot. I come home tired. He do miss a lot. He dropped off for a whole month. Sometimes I would talk to him and he wouldn't even turn around and look at me. I would just get frustrated because in any way that I talk to him, it just doesn't go through his head. I didn't give up because there's always hope that they'll snap out of it. Give your teen the boost they need to graduate. Call 1-877-4-A-KID or join us at boostup.org for tips and advice. Hi guys, this is Aaron Andrews from ESPN and you're watching Sports Night on NNN. Go Wildcats! Welcome back. We're now joined by our senior basketball analyst, Justin Checker. Justin, with an essential play-in game Saturday versus Iowa in the Big Ten Tournament next week, what were your concerns after last night's loss? Well, Northwestern lost the game last night to Ohio State on the glass. Jared Selinger had 18 rebounds. That was the same amount that Northwestern had as a team with a negative 26 margin on the glass. We'll take a look at some of the video last night. They got it done both ends on the offensive end and the defensive end. Northwestern just could not rebound at all. So moving forward, Northwestern's gonna have to do a much better job on the glass. Luckily for them, their next opponent, opponent Iowa, doesn't have a similar interior presence as Jared Selinger and Deshaun Thomas. But heading into the tournament next week, seeing some of these bigger teams again, really rebounding, you cannot win in any game in college basketball, you're gonna have a negative 26 margin on the glass. So what are gonna be the keys to getting the win against Iowa? Well, if you remember last time Northwestern took on Iowa, they won that game in Evanston 83-64. to Since then, Iowa's playing much better basketball, including pick up, picking up some big wins against top 20 teams, Wisconsin and Indiana. But the key to that win back at Evanston was a transition game. With the smaller lineup and John Scherner playing the five spot, Northwestern really pushed the ball well in transition, got some easy lands. Also, they spread the ball around that game, had five players in double digits. A big concern last night was only two guys really stepped up with John Scherner and Drew Crawford. The team needs more balance and push the ball in transition Saturday at Iowa, and I think they can get the win there. Yeah. So give me a prediction for Saturday and whether or not the Cats make the tourney. Well, I think Northwestern, going off those points, if they can spread the ball around, play well in transition, I think they can pick up the win at Iowa. Again, Iowa's playing hot as of late. Matt Gaines, the senior, has been on fire, so the defense will have to take a look. But really, when you look at this team with John Schur and Drew Crawford, two players that really would get much more attention nationally if Northwestern didn't have this monkey on its back and they never made the tournament. For Sherna, it's his last go around for Crawford. The junior played fantastic last night against Ohio State minus a few missed free throws. But for these two stars, we're going to come out, play well Saturday, get at least one win next week in the Big Ten tournament against a team like Minnesota, Illinois. I think led by these two stars, Northwestern can go dancing. So let's punch our tickets. I'm going to say it here on my last sports night as a Basketball analyst Northwestern will go dancing in 2012. All right, bold predictions, but I like them. Thanks a lot, Justin. Here at Sports Night, we really like basketball, so we're going to keep on talking hoops. Last week, junior standout Drew Crawford was recognized for his stellar accomplishments off of the hardwood. Crawford was named to the Capital One Academic All-America second team. He is the eighth NU men's basketball player to earn the distinction and the first since 1994 when Kevin Rankin was also named to the second team. Crawford is one of three current NU athletes to be named an academic All-American for the 2011-2012 academic year. Football players Patrick Ward and Jacob Schmidt were also named to the first and second team respectively. The women's basketball team had been sliding of late and were in danger of finishing the season below 500 but they had a chance to win in their final game of the season against Michigan State at Welsh Ryan. Yeah, the Cats honored three of their seniors, Ali Mocky, Brittany Orban, and Taylor Jones, as they all played their final game in Evanston in a need of a victory to keep hopes of postseason play alive. But it wasn't meant to be the Cats. Uh, it wasn't meant to be. The Cats got outscored by 15 in the second half and route to a 76-57 loss. Junior Danielle Diamant continued her good play of late with 16 points, but the Cats couldn't hold off the Spartans. Porsche Poole led all scorers with 22 points. And forward LaKendra Johnson snagged nine rebounds, giving her over 1,000 in her career. And Netta, the Cats didn't fare much better in the first round of the Big Ten Tournament. Today, losing 88-56 to the 24th ranked Nebraska Cornhunk. Cornhuskers, excuse me. Once again, Daniel Diamant led NU with 14 points. Nebraska would open up a 41-10 lead and not look back. 
Jordan Hooper scored 18 for the Huskers. Northwestern finishes its season at 14 and 16, marking the first time in three years that the team had a losing record. And coming up on Sports Night, we take a look at some of NU's other sports. In Sports Night's resident wrestling guru, Stephen Boyle, takes a look at the NU team as they head into the Big Ten Tournament. Stick around. Go you Northwest. Go Northwest and break right through the With our colors flying. We will be tight. We will cheer you all the go. Go you Northwest and fight for the drop. Sweet victory for the fame of our fair name and go Northwestern win that game. Ba, 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 ba. Go Cats! So, April. Yeah? You know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Johannes Rums! I bring you arts enriched raisin brahms, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Welcome back, Cats fans. There's been a lot of talk surrounding the NU basketball team and the Big Ten tournament. That's coming up next week, but they aren't the only team looking to win big at the conference tournament. That's right, Netta. The 18th ranked Wildcat wrestling team went out to Purdue earlier today to prepare for their own Big Ten tourney. Sports Night's Stephen Boyle is traveling with the team and he takes a look at the Cats' postseason outlook. This is what the whole season comes down to. This is what you trained every day for. This tournament right here in the NCAAs. Redshirt freshman Lee Munster is in one of the toughest weight classes in the conference. Ten wrestlers from the Big Ten will earn automatic berths to NCAAs. Munster will likely be the ninth seed, but he isn't content with just placing at the tournament. Anyone, any day can win. I don't want to just qualify. I want to, you know, step up and prepare myself for NCAAs and, you know, have a good tournament. Munster isn't all talk. He took the same mindset into the Midlands tournament this year and was the lowest seed to win it all. Coach Drew Pariano thinks all the wrestlers are again peaking at the right time. We're gonna surprise people at every weight. Um, uh, you know, Jason's the one seat, so I guess I would say no there. You know, you want to go out and take care of business, but at every other weight, we want to uh, we want to put a loss on somebody we didn't put a loss on earlier in the year. Some NU wrestlers will need big upsets to continue their seasons. Senior John Schoen was one of the top 33 wrestlers in the first two coaches' polls. But after falling out of the rankings, he needs a strong Big Ten performance. I would have liked to have gotten a seed or something, or been in the coaches poll instead of falling out right at the end. Would have been nice, but you know, it really doesn't matter because I plan on going to Big Tens and I plan on wrestling how I know how to and placing and making it. Ultimately, every NU grappler's goal is the same. Qualify for the NCAA championships and be one of 33 athletes competing for a national title. I've gone to every NCAA tournament uh, just about since I was in like 7th, 8th grade. So I know what the tournament's like and i just, you know, got to make sure I get there and make sure I'm ready to wrestle. The only unseeded NU wrestler with a chance for an at-large NCAA tournament bid is 165-pounder Pierce Harder. The redshirt freshman is currently ranked 28th in the coaches poll. Stephen Boyle, in and in sports. And now, brace yourself, Cats fans, because we're now joined by the one and only Stephen Boyle, who is in West, La West Lafayette with the Wildcat wrestling team at the Big Ten Tournament. Stephen, Drew Periano said that the Cats will surprise the Big Ten in every weight class, but which wrestlers do you think Cats fans should watch closely this weekend? Well, Netta, um, 
there's a couple of wrestlers that I think uh, Cats fans should look out for. One of them is 174-pounder Lee Munster, who you s- heard from in the package that you guys just saw. Um, he's only a number nine seed, and 10 of the wrestlers in his weight class will qualify for the tournament. But he beat the number three seed, Ethan Lofthouse, at Midlands, and I think he could surprise some people here. But the guy I'm really excited about is 285-pounder Mike McMullen. The heavyweight's a five seed, but every time I've talked to Drew Pariano, he said that this guy's so much better than the number that's by his name. He wrestled the two seed Cameron Wade from PSU really tough earlier this year. He can hang with anybody in the conference, and I think Cats fans will uh, be excited to see how he wrestles here, and he's only a redshirt freshman, so keep an eye out on this kid uh, for a couple years to come. There are a couple of NU wrestlers that are not expected to qualify for NCAAs. Do you think any of them will surprise us, Steven? Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd like to say yes. Uh, I think the one guy that has a chance to is senior John Schoen at 197 pounds. Uh, he's got a really tough road ahead. He's not seated, um, so, and he dropped out of the coaches' pool. So he essentially has to place in the top eight, um, and he's going to have to beat at least two guys that he's lost to earlier this season if he wants to qualify. Um, I think his experience will help him out. If any wildcat that's not supposed to qualify is going to, it's going to be John Schoen, but again, uh, a tough road ahead for the senior. Okay, thank you, Stephen. And to continue to follow Northwestern's wrestling team, you can check out Stephen's video updates on NUSports.com. The women's tennis team has seen a season of ups and downs thus far. Despite losing to 16th-ranked Georgia Tech last Friday, the Cats have managed to claw back into 9th place in the ITA team rankings. They faced a wealth of top 10 teams during the month of February, allowing them to make the jump from number 12 to number 9. Junior Kate Turvey also took a big leap in the rankings as she moved up from being ranked number 26 nationally to number 11, and Brittany Walchek got some wow when she moved into the top 50, being pushed up to number 45 in the nation from her previous spot at 86. And you next plays tomorrow against the 15th ranked Texas Longhorns in Austin. The 57th ranked men's tennis team entered its Wednesday match against Louisville with a 7-3 record. The Cats went into Kentucky coming off a 7-0 loss to North Carolina State. And unfortunately, NU didn't leave the Bluegrass State on happy terms. And the Cats were swept in all three of their doubles matches, but had a few bright spots in singles play. In their top spot, junior Spencer Wolf pulled a tough advantage in his match 7-6-7-5 and holding down the third line sophomore Raleigh Smith breezed by Louisville's Albert Wagner 6-3-6-1. The Northwestern softball team also had a tough week. The team lost three of five games in the Cathedral City Classic this past week, but they did come away with a 7-1 victory against the 11th ranked Missouri Tigers. To go along with their big win, the Cats received some good news when Olivia Dewar was named Big Ten Freshman of the Week after her stellar performance during the Classic. The team is now looking ahead to the DeMarney Invitational in Fullerton, California, which begins tomorrow. And coming up, we've got that favorite time of the week, Plays of the Week. And our own Harry Swartout continues his series on club sports with a look at the NU squash team. If a natural disaster happened and we were outside the home, we would probably all meet, I'll say, around the grocery store, you know? We would all meet at a bus stop. That is our meeting place. Well, we would probably just meet out in front of the house. Oh, uh, we'd probably meet at our neighbor's house. If you have no plan, then you can just plan what to do as it happens. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Johannes Ross! I bring you arts enriched raisin blums, fortified with increased test scores and creative problem solving skills. It's 
Good. Und good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the arts! <laughs> <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Squash. No, I'm not talking about the vegetable. I'm talking about the sport that people play in your grandparents' country club in Boca. And Guzzy, can you help me out here a little bit? I mean, I'm just as clueless, but that's why we have Harry. So Harry, help us out. Northwestern club squash is not your grandparents' squash. It's fast, physical, and fun. Dedication is the name of the game for these players. We've imported a German international squash pro to coach the team. On this week's Harry Sword Out Goes Clubbing, I took a look inside the racket bag to find out what drives the squash club. With a racket bag, don't assume they play tennis. I, I've had so many people come up to me seeing me carrying this bag and say, oh, do you play tennis? And I'm like, no, it's not squash. And they're like, what's the difference? Big mistake. For those dedicated to squash, there's a huge difference between squash, tennis, badminton, and even racquetball. Squash is to racquetball as chess is to checkers because it really is. I mean, there's, you can't compare squash and racquetball. Think of squash as racquetball on hard mode. For one, the ball doesn't bounce. If you drop it from here, it'll probably bounce one close to ground and die. No bouncing means two things. The first is running. You need to be able to run around for about, at least about an hour, because all the time you're gonna be swinging the racket, constantly moving from left to right, forward and back. The second is swinging hard. You can release all your frustration out on this game, especially like hitting the ball as hard as you can against the wall, take off all your tension, and I mean, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. With all that pent-up aggression, someone's bound to get hurt, right? I got the ball hit on my ass so many times, and the next day you have a bruise in the morning, sometimes you can't sit, but I mean, life goes on, it's fine. It doesn't really hurt that much. The pain is worth it. NU Squash Club is pretty good. Recently, we went to Nationals. They were against um, roughly about 60, 70 of uh, teams all across from the US. And we did great, we placed fifth. Place fifth out of that many teams? They must have some serious skill. Luckily, you only need three things to play squash. Motivation, dedication, and just the love of the game. I think those are the few elements that you just need. I'm dedicated and motivated at least to make sure I don't look silly on TV. The ball really doesn't bounce, but don't take it from me. Try it yourself. Come play squash, we have tryouts on April 1st. You can join, you'll have a load of fun. Harry Sword out, NNN Sports. Thanks for that, Harry. But now it's time for what you've all been waiting for, Plays of the Week. Let's get to it. Coming up at number one, let's see what we've got. Up, it's some basketball, and it's my favorite walk-on, or everyone's favorite walk-on, Reggie Hearn, with the reverse there. And he had a great night. Number two, Drew Crawford. Oh, this one is just gonna be nice. Look at that, and one. So nice for playing twice. He had such, he really took over that game. And number one, what is it? Let's see, up. We've got Alex Marcatulio to tie the game. Unfortunately, that didn't do much for the Cats, but it was still a pretty play. And that's all the time we've got for tonight. I'm Natalie Lax. And I'm Nguzi Akelado. Good night and take it easy.